Talk about presents. Oh, it certainly does. And wow. that's what the previous owner did. They just kept it in a museum, presenting it to people. And it really hasn't moved much in 20 years. It looks presidential, something that would be like top level government in some country. Uh, I don't know about that, but can yeah. I please touch your wood. Oh, by all means, okay. please. Welcome to Hoobie's Garage, the dumbest automotive channel in all of YouTube. And this is my latest purchase, a 1946 Chrysler Town & Country Woody Convertible, the king of the Woodies. What once was a total blue chip collector car selling for over six figures, but as interest has died down in these antique cars, prices have come down and I bought this for only $58,000. Now the big but with this is it had been sitting in a museum. It was part of a museum collection. I got the title for almost 20 years when they purchased it. So it really hasn't moved since I graduated high school, basically. And today is going to be a pretty stupid video because despite that information, I am going to try and drive it 30 miles up to the car wizard so we can start the recommissioning process. Now it still does run and drive very nice, but I haven't tried to drive it any kind of distance. And the tires are old and blocked off, so it does shake at highway speeds. It also has some leaks and other issues, so I'm sure the car wizard will have an absolute field day. But not only that, my other car from the 1940s, a 1949 Cadillac, Fastback also broke down on me. I was trying to move it out of my storage building that I was finally giving up, putting in the hangar here, and it refused to start. It was getting no fuel. It would run on starting fluid, but then uh, just refused to run on its own. So I had to have it towed up to the car wizards as well. And apparently there is some good news on the Cadillac Eldorado, which I did try to bring home from the car wizards, but it had a big failure. It threw off its main belt shortly after leaving the parking lot, and I had to limp it back and take something else home. But Apparently it was something stupid simple there, so we'll find that out at the car wizards as well. But first, well, let's see if this old Woody can still do it. So starting procedure on the New Yorker, there's a battery cut off right down there by my backpack. I turn that on, turn the key, we have fuel pump, and then we have a start button over here underneath the spotlight, and... Batteries low. But before we hit the road, I would like to thank BetterHelp for sponsoring this video. It's the new year and a great time to work on yourself. Personally, I'm trying to plow through all these expenses with the new garage and farmhouse renovations, then sit back and take a hard look at my work life balance, which hasn't been very well balanced. I've had a lot of anger lately also over something totally out of my control that I wish I could let go of, and this is where therapy can help me achieve these goals. BetterHelp makes starting therapy easier and much less intimidating for a lot of people. You can check it out yourself at the link below or at betterhelp.com slash hoovies. BetterHelp lets you have therapy sessions as a phone call, as a video chat, or even messaging. Whatever the most comfortable version of therapy is for you. BetterHelp can match you to one of over 30,000 therapists in their network based on your needs, preferences, and location, which gives you access to a wider range of expertise than what may be available in your city. To get started, you fill out a questionnaire that will ask you about what challenges you're going through and what kind of therapist you'd like, and then BetterHelp can match you with a therapist to help you. You'll be matched with a therapist in most cases within 48 hours. You can schedule therapy sessions at a time that's convenient for you. If you feel like your therapist isn't a great fit, you can switch therapists with a click of a button in your settings at no additional cost. So join over 4 million people who've used BetterHelp to start living a healthier, happier life. Click the link in the description or visit betterhelp.com slash hoovies. There we go. Here goes nothing. Going down the taxiway, you would never think this car has been sitting for 20 years, but we're only going 20 or 30 miles per hour. Uh, but you can still notice some weird things like the brakes. When you hit the brakes, they pull hard, run away. And somebody coming through way too fast in their Honda. As you saw, they still work though, but as you get up to speed, things get a lot more sketchy and I haven't gone much faster than 55. I probably won't dare going up to the car wizard, so it'll be a long, hopefully relaxing drive where there's no incidents. But one thing that's working perfectly is this fluid drive semi-automatic transmission, which is so cool. Here's the shift to one, two. Did that without the clutch, without changing gear, but then if I want to go into high gears, three, four, I put the clutch in, put the lever down to the bottom, and now I'm in third. And soon, when I let off, there we are, top gear. 
This is a very innovative system for the time that made cars much easier to drive, especially on busy city streets. And that extra gear gave you some highway legs so these things can go 80, 85 miles per hour at top speed. I dare won't do that, but it still has that old school straight eight under the hood, which I'm sure the car wizard will love if he sees it. About the halfway mark, and other than impeding traffic a little bit, I'm doing pretty good. Sorry. Sorry. What a good car. Good car. Yes. And the other 40s car, well, bad car. Very, very naughty. Wizard. It made it. Wizard, it made it. Talk about presents. Oh, it certainly does. And wow. that's what the previous owner did. They just kept it in a museum presenting it to people, and it really hasn't moved much in 20 years. It looks presidential, something that would be like top-level government of some country. Uh, I don't I, know about that, but can yeah. I please touch your wood? Oh, by all means, okay. please rub it. It's actually in really nice shape. Yeah, some of these, I think you've mentioned to me before, where they're just, they're like overly shiny or... Yeah, over restored yeah. to where they look beautiful, but it looks uh, way too shiny. This one, I believe, is the original wood that has been refinished. This car was a red car when it left the factory. It's been repainted black, but a lot of it is, I think, original. I don't think it's ever been fully restored, and I see little touches of this thing maybe being original, like the finish here on the top of the door, the wear on it, it's... It's just right to sort of look like it's never been redone. The seat's obviously redone, and then the inside of this door has the original color, I think. But yeah, take a look under the hood. The acres and acres of chrome there. Ugh. Boom. That stood at attention really well, it, didn't it? It did, yes. Straight eight. Straight eight. Oh, nice, man. gigantic radiator. And then the air intake, rather simple. Now this should be an oil bath, but I haven't looked inside. You wanna take a peek and see if there's sure. still some oil in there? There should be engine oil in the bottom of it. The oil actually does the filtering. The engine looks industrial, like on a steamship or something. Mm -hmm. Is there oil floating around in there? Yeah, there sure actually is. enough. Yeah, it is. So a nice, simple, flat head straight eight, but look at the carburetor. You see the little extra stuff on it? So this is like a switch? Yes, wiring. there's something. two switches and it's for shifting on the semi-automatic fluid drive. So one is a kick down when you floor it, it wants to detect that the throttle is opening up to do a kick down on the transmission. And the other one is to detect when it goes all the way flat to say like an idle so it shifts for you. So it's a throttle position sensor basically. Pretty much, yeah. Looks like the wire's resting on the exhaust. We'll fix that up for you. Oh. Looks like it's melted a little bit. Oh, okay, yeah, definitely fix that, because if I lose it, then I only have first and third gear as far oh. as shifting. And when I first got it, they had the idle set so high that it wouldn't shift because it wouldn't go down low enough in the RPMs for it to detect the shift. I can tell you don't have any heat. Uh, no, unfortunately, yeah, that'd be the, the heater core lines, and uh, there's no hoses going to them. No? Nope. Yeah, so something to look into there, because heat would be nice on this car. And I know it is leaking a little bit. It doesn't have a valve cover gasket, so it's no. not that. Uh, actually, it does. It does. It's right here. Oh, right. And that's probably where it could be leaking. So they're coming up from the bottom there. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. a side access on there. And the yeah. other side, it still retains its original 6-volt system. That is it, so cool. It all The battery's been replaced recently, but it all looks ancient. Look at that coil there. This says solar or something. Yeah. Do you think it's actually old or just made to look old? I think it's actually old. Still working great. The idle on this thing is fantastic. And uh, oil filter. Well, that looks a little wet down there, huh? Mm-hmm. That might be leaking a little bit. So this has a foot starter where you actually push a button on the floor? No, no, it's a push button on the dash. But yeah, you got to hear this thing. Let me make sure it's out of gear. Ah. There's, there's one issue I'm having. So when it clicked there, it's like the six volt doesn't get enough volt to the starter and acts like the battery's dead when it's not. Yeah. I know that the grounds are very sensitive on these. You see, 
how thick it is. Mm -hmm. This is the ground here, so it must be. Let me take a look here. So it's positive ground. See, it says a plus. Mm -hmm. Plus goes to ground. So it's backwards for the northern part, which is what they did back then. Mm. This is awfully light cable for a six fold system. So we could put a heavier heavier cable if they saw it. Okay. It sounds slow cranking, but that's the way they were back then. Sounds nice, huh? Sounds really good, yeah. Yeah, mechanically it doesn't seem like it needs much. Um, it's a lot of the electrical stuff inside here. So the heater, the fan, none of that comes on. Okay. The radio, I'll give up on that. It actually turns on and makes some noise, but uh, doesn't work. There's a few lights that don't work, but amazingly, the power top does work. It actually works? It actually works. Wow. Yeah. It's electric? It's electric. Yep. Wow. And just driving it, the speedometer does work, but the cable it needs to be lubed really, really bad. Just indicative of sitting for such a long time. Mm -hmm. And I have to do tires, obviously, and the brakes, they kind of pull in one way when I hit the brakes. But the more I drove it, the better it got. So. It's probably just from sitting a long time. Yeah. Well, while it's running, I need to pull it onto the lift. Sure, but I want to check, check out this hinge. Yeah, isn't that wild? That is all wood. The structure of this trunk and the doors. It's like a bank vault hinge. All right, well, I'll help you get on the lift. Well, it hasn't been itself apart on the lift, so the structure must be pretty good, huh? Yeah, it must be. This this car is in the area where cars were long and skinny. Yes. Yeah. Yep, much like me. <laughs> okay. Long, skinny Woody. I see some uh, antifreeze leaking there. So this is all recent from my road trip up today, huh? Yeah, and then there's some here. Hmm. Let me see. Well, it's bright neon green. You don't need to taste it. Yep, it's antifreeze. Okay, so my radiator needs to be fixed up. We need to find up. out. It could be a hose or something. We'll have to take a look. Old drum brakes all around. Yes. And they do feel a lot better now that I've driven it a little bit. But I wouldn't mind you going through it since it's been sitting for so long. Yeah, these are easy to adjust. It just has these little adjustments here it's pretty easy to do yeah you did a great job on my old 68 charger doing that with the four wheel drums i thought you'd mm -hmm. convert it to traditional disc brakes or up modernize it and i didn't need to no i didn't need to yeah the shocks are good yeah. they look like maybe 1990s shocks or something it rides really nice it has a spacer here maybe just to help with ride height it was probably getting from age it was probably sagging oh the springs yeah, and there's one there. Okay. That just helps bring it back up to stock ride height. Mm hmm. And here's some oil. Mm hmm. Looks like the valve cover is leaking over here. The side mount. Yeah. Okay. Valve cover. Nice. Mm hmm. Nothing right. serious. That's what all this is. Okay. This transmission uses, like it says, 10 weight motor oil only. You don't put transmission fluid in this. Interesting. And it is. Well, it looks a little bit more like an automatic than it does a manual, I suppose. But what's this apparatus on the back here? This is your parking brake. Oh, okay. So you, and it clamps around this drum and keeps it from moving. Okay. Cool. These are probably like servos, electronic or something, that put, move forks inside the transmission. Mm-hmm. It actually has a clutch. Look, it does. Here it is right here. Yep. Okay, this side looks more like a manual, and the other side looks like an automatic. So, yeah. And it is both. They call it a semi-automatic fluid drive. Mm -hmm. Interesting. It probably has a uh, some sort of a torque converter or a Taurus or something like that up front. And here's that X-frame, which uh, Mopar is kind of famous for in the 60s. They were banned from demolition derbies with the Imperials because of the very sturdy frames on their cars. Super strong, yeah. yeah. Got a little bit of play in the diff. Just from age, but I wouldn't. I probably wouldn't mess with it. It doesn't seem too bad when I drive it. Yeah. I do notice an exhaust leak, though. Uh oh. Looks like it's been crushed or hit. How does that happen? I don't know. But it's coming from more in the back. Oh yeah, there it is. Yeah, we can probably put in a muffler here. Just a muffler right there. Mm -hmm. That's something. Either that, or we can have our exhaust guy just go from here back. Yeah, I can hear a little bit of an exhaust leak, and then when I'm outside in the cold, you can see smoke coming from around here and out the back. I'm curious what this is. 
That's a heavy duty cable. That's the that's the cutoff in the seat. Okay, so it's a battery cutoff. So a battery cutoff switch. Okay. I hit that every time I want to start the car, leave it, I turn it off. Okay. What do they call these? A panard bar? Yeah. Just for stabilization or? Yeah, it keeps the axle from shifting this way. Oh, okay. And leaf springs. Mm -hmm. Leaf springs in the back, coils in the front. There's a fuel tank. Yeah. As far as the undercarriage, it looks like it's had a rattle can restoration mm -hmm. at some point. A uh, little bit of rust proofing on this side. Yeah. But everything looks really solid. You can see there's some wood right there. Really impressive. Yeah, and you think the fluid drive is okay. You think that's all oil from up higher. Well, like there's something leaking here, maybe this copper washer or a gasket or something right there. Nothing serious. Yeah. All this under here is from your valve cover. Okay. Well, it'll be nice to clean it up to where it doesn't drip too much on the ground. So look into that, if you will. Okay. And uh, I know the uh, 49 Cadillac, unfortunately, wouldn't start because of no fuel. So this was my daily driver 40s car, but... At the new farm, I don't have a place to put it, so it's been sitting in storage for six months. Oh. And when it came time to move it, that's why all this dust is on it. Uh, no start, no fuel. It run on starting fluid. I cranked it forever, and it just never got fuel. So, mm -hmm. did you look at it yet? Yep, it's already fixed. I'll show you actually what it was. You can see it. There's a little filter on these old Quadrajet carburetors. You can actually see it says stamped on there. It says filter. Mm hmm. And you unscrew this large nut here, and there's an actual filter, which is plugged in there. Interesting. So for people screaming, what is that engine doing on a 49 Cadillac? This is sort of a resto mod. It has a 500 cubic inch uh, uh, Cadillac V8 from maybe 1970 or so from the 70s. So it's sort of been resto modded. This was the first year of overhead valve V8s, the first Motor Trend car of the year. The body, a fastback, really cool, uh, but not original like the... Uh, 46. So this thing, I could cruise on the highway 80, 90 miles an hour, no problem. And the aerodynamic shape is actually pretty quiet. Comfy inside. Modern seats and everything, air conditioning, heating, everything you'd ever want. So a really neat car that just, it sat and now it's punishing me for sitting. So yeah. I noticed you have the radiator cap off. We found a couple pinholes in the bottom of the radiator. This is some kind of a custom radiator that was made specifically to work with this engine. Unfortunately, you can't just go buy another one. So we're going to have to remove it, send it to a radiator shop and have them fix it. So. Oh, so I'm potentially looking at two radiators because the 46 is leaking. Yes. We'll see from there. Uh, and that. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, shoot. And the heads have come back on the Ferrari so that can start going back together. Yep. Uh, the Callaway I just dropped off uh, right before Christmas and you shut down for the holidays. So the OptiSpark stuff you haven't done yet. Haven't messed with it yet. Uh, but where we last left off, I tried to take this guy home, the Eldo rod, and she threw a belt. So why did that happen? It was a defective belt. The cords inside the belt, actually a couple of them had broke and it was spongy, stretchy. We just warrantied it and got a new belt and... So you called it all these defective parts new out of the box and it was literally the belt not one of the pulleys like you first suspected right. huh it was a brand new belt and it was bad unfortunately that makes mechanics look bad when it's not their fault it's mm -hmm. just the quality of parts have gone so downhill in recent years they really have yeah so uh daniel sons in florida so i assume the raptor uh was, looks like it's getting closer though yeah, but it just has a transmission mount, which is actually here. I'll show it to you. Because so we went into sort of exhaust manifold hell with that. And the yeah. while you're there is with the mounts and everything else, it turned into, yeah, a thing. Shoot! So here's the, uh, this transmission mount was also, see how it's ripped? I can literally put my screwdriver through it. Yeah. So we didn't want to put that back on there. We had to wait for, it finally just showed up today, actually. Okay, and that's why the engine's still braced? Yep. All right. We're just going to put that on and put the wheels on. It's pretty much done. A 300,000 mile Raptor is getting basically a restoration. So it's kind of, kind of stupid. But uh, I guess good news there. The 46, considering how original it is and how long it's been sitting, not too bad, huh? Not too bad at all. All right. So I'm not looking at thousands and thousands of dollars right. like the uh, Raptor. Maybe a couple at the most. All right. Fantastic. Well, thank you, Wizard. I guess I will try to take the Eldo Rod home again. Again, I don't know as far as what they've done when they modified it, if it's highway happy. Or I don't. I have no clue. 
Well, I have new tires on it because yeah. like that, this thing had been sitting basically in a collection for 20 years. So it has new rubber on it. Uh, you've gone through the air ride where it has the switch. I have the cameras for the mirrors. You've done everything you can do. All the pulleys replaced. Mm -hmm. uh, you've done everything you can to get this thing uh, road worthy again. And now we'll just see if it actually is. I wouldn't drive it at night. It has a poor excuse for headlights. That is true. All right. Well, wish me luck again. Fingers crossed, and I'll cross something else, too. <laughs> yes, they got the poppers going for me. Oh, yeah. Start up my straight pipe caddy here. <laughs> Sounds so good. And there are my side view cameras. Each one right there, so I can back out. Turn it off, I have the rear view as well. It's just so cool. There's Wizard. It's, it's Wizard picture in picture. Picture in picture, yeah. So you're letting me out the door. That means no bill, right? Actually, this time there's no bill. I'm gonna <laughs> leave before he remembers one. All right, so a 99 Eldorado with 8,000 original miles on it. It was probably a company car originally and hasn't been out on public roads in probably 25 years. Probably the first time it's seen 60 in that period of time as well, and it feels great. <laughs> but now I'm gonna find out if the head gasket's good or not, because it's a notorious thing with these North Star V8s, and that temp will start creeping up if the head gasket is bad, and it'll all boil over like a whistling teapot, and that's what uh, totaled out most of the North Star engines of this era. So, fingers crossed, but so far so good. Actually, the suspension as we go into this turn, feels pretty good. It doesn't feel unsteady or unsure of itself at all. And those new tires are certainly doing the job. Just look at that exhaust. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> well, it made it and honestly, I couldn't be happier with this thing. How well it drove considering what it is, a concept car that was never meant to be driven daily ever again. And that 8,000 original mile interior is so, so nice. It takes you back to a day, well, days that will never come again when it comes to seat comfort and such. And also it took me back to my dealer days when I was buying these at auction, North Star V8 Cadillacs, worrying about them overheating on the ride home from the auction, hoping I didn't buy a lemon. And in this case, well, I did not. It is such a nice car. I'm just so pleasantly surprised with how nice it drives, but then you get out and look at this thing and it's just it's absolutely wild. Thank you so much for watching.